Welcome into the channel. I'm Cody Stutes. Let's talk some Texans. C.J. Stroud continues to impress, and this time he impresses even in a loss to the Atlanta Falcons. He explained exactly how that final play went down. What does his explanation mean for where he is as a quarterback in the NFL and where he is as a quarterback for this team? Well, Stroud will tell us a little bit about what he feels like his position is with his teammates. D'Amico Ryans will weigh in and we'll talk about it and what it means for the Houston Texans going forward. But appreciate a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's talk about C.J. Stroud as the leadership, maybe the legend, continues to grow here. That game against the Atlanta Falcons, not the best game that C.J. Stroud has played, but still not a bad game. There was a lack of crispness to the offense. It just wasn't as smooth. It didn't look as good as it had the previous two games. That was to be expected with Atlanta being a better defensive opponent. They came in allowing the least amount of passing yards of any of the NFC teams in all of football. And the offense, the passing offense, struggled a little bit. It wasn't as smooth and seamless as it had looked in previous weeks. The Falcons did a good job on Nico Collins. Falcons did a good job on Tank Dell while he was out there. They did a good job on Robert Woods. It was obviously a good job by the Falcons slowing down the Texans rushing attack, so there was no consistent rhythm to this offense, certainly not in the second half, until that final drive where C.J. Stroud and Damian Pierce got going, got after it, and it finished with that impressive, incredible toss to Dalton Schultz into the end zone on third and long, and that's third and long. It's fourth and long if you're – that's an incomplete. It's obviously game over if you turn the ball over. But that's fourth and long when you got to have it. There's no field goal on this. you got to get it. So to trust C.J. Stroud in that moment to make that throw, to run that play, that was fantastic. C.J. Stroud's going to explain to us exactly how that play came to be. All my secrets. But uh, I just had – like I think it's like a gut feeling that you get like in between the games. So me and Bobby had a conversation on the sideline. Um, about like a certain route that we wanted to do, and uh, we didn't have it in at practice. I just felt like in those big time situations, uh, the guys that they uh, Jesse Bates is a great player, uh, like super good, really instinctive. Like he he almost picked me off on the uh, he like did some weird 360 turn. It's the first time I've seen that, so now I got it in my bank, and hopefully he don't ever get me again. Um, but that, but playing against him like keeps you honest and. Um, I knew that he was going to try to make the play of the game and try to take it away. But um, like previous film study, I, I watched was watching film on uh, like a big time third down situation, and just seeing that they're in like this quarter is matchy like uh, uh, cover four look. And I told Dalton to do a certain thing in his route um, that I thought would get us not only a first down but a touchdown. So um, we were on the same page, and I'm literally trying to like break down what I, exactly what I want from him in the huddle and at first I don't think it registered and then he was like, okay I get it I get it so um Dawn's really smart and, and made a hell of a route um but yeah man just being instinctive just trying to put my guys in the best position to, to make plays and win games and um that instant like it, it was really special and Bobby and them were really happy on the sideline and um he was a part of that too uh, talking on the sideline with him I told him that I was thinking about doing it and he was like man if you're feeling it go ahead and make a play so uh, made the play and um is what it is. How about that from C.J. Stroud? He helps draw up the play that the Texans are going to use to try to win the football game. And now I know that there's a comment to be made, and I've seen it on social media. And Well, how come Bobby Slowick didn't notice that? That play works because Bobby Slowick has been calling that Dalton Schultz post in front of Jesse Bates all game. And then Slowick, along with C.J. Stroud, once that's brought up, hey, that's a genius chance to take advantage of Jesse Bates. Slow seen that Jesse Bates in those big third down moments wants to go out there and make a play. C.J. Stroud talked about it, and they're in the huddle. And I can just imagine C.J. Stroud looking at Dalton Schultz, and he's like, no, do it this way, go this way. No, no, this way, cut in, cut out, boom. That was just fantastic to hear. This is week five for C.J. Stroud. Week five in the NFL in the regular season for C.J. Stroud. He's had four weeks going into this game of film study to pick that up on 
Jesse Bates' tendencies, to pick up that Jesse Bates is trying to make a big play on third down. Now, maybe that's every safety. Maybe that's every guy who's in Jesse Bates' class, so it's not as impressive, but it's a rookie quarterback in the fifth week of his career, and he's going to the sideline, going to the offensive coordinator like, hey, you think Jesse Bates is going to try to get us here on this third down? Actually, CJ, I do. Okay, what if Dalton Schultz did this? Cool. Tell him what to run. Go into the huddle. Tell him what to run. That's impressive stuff from C.J. Stroud, and it's a good job by Bobby Slowick to have them in that position with the calls that he's made up to that point. And it's a good job for C.J. Stroud to understand, hey, what we've done to this point sets up Jesse Bates to get shook by Dalton Schultz, and then C.J. Stroud made a fantastic throw. If you go back and watch, he had to readjust his footing. It wasn't even it wasn't even like a full like traditional throw. I mean, just off platform, incredible stuff from C.J. Stroud in that moment. It's really fun to see. And this is another element of that leadership growing for C.J. Stroud. Like, yeah, he's the quarterback. He calls the plays. You're going to run the play. But the team has to feel that once they get in that huddle, like, oh, this guy's pretty legit. I mean, five weeks in, he's figuring out that we got to beat Jesse Bates here on this third down, on third and nine. And again, I want to go back to the fact it's third and long, if you don't get that, it's fourth and long with the game in front of you. Like you lose the football game if you don't convert on third and fourth down. Like there's not there's not an option to kick this thing. There's not an option to go for it and then get the ball back with any real chance to win the football game. No chance at all based on the clock, I believe. So it was win the game on that drive or hopefully win the game on that drive. And the Texans went out there and hit that play in large part because C.J. Stroud saw it, executed it. Man, fantastic stuff and growth from C.J. Stroud. And growth in leadership is something else that C.J. Stroud has talked a little bit about at the podium. It's off. It's like when I get in the huddle and I'm saying the plays, like guys are looking me right in my eyes. Like they, I, It feel like uh, they trust me more than they did maybe in the preseason or like week one, week two. So um, I definitely think like when you put it on the field, that's when – like guys in the building and and the organization and front office, the coaches, the players, like the, like everybody, um, even the chefs look at you different. So um, for me, like I just want to keep building trust and keep putting it on the field and keep playing well because um, I know I can and I have that confidence in myself. But just as quick as you get comfortable and want to think that your your stuff doesn't stink, that's when you get shot so um, or, or, or make a mistake that you shouldn't make. So for me, I'm just down to little, de de little details and get better every day. Um, but, yeah, I think that's what I've been feeling, just more trust from everybody. That's one of my favorite things about C.J. Stroud is he just doesn't rest on what he's accomplished. Yeah, it's great that he was able to get with the offensive coordinator, come over the play to win the football game. They didn't win the football game. It wasn't good enough for him they wanted more and I love the line about looking in the huddle and guys seeing him eye to eye and trusting him I love that a lot more when you factor in that in that game he had to look at Dalton Schultz and explain exactly the route they wanted him to run and then they made the throw because the route worked and they almost won the football game based off of that I love that element this team continues to showcase that it is going somewhere with C.J. Stroud and his teammates, they know it now. They feel it now, and it's getting deeper and deeper, the connection between quarterback and the rest of the team. It is impressive to watch, and you're starting to see it pay off on the football field. You don't always see it immediately pay off. You can hear about a guy being a good leader. It just never turns into stuff on the football field. No, it actually is paying off on the football field. D'Amico Ryan's explained that, Hey, this team loves them some C.J. Stroud. I've seen him grow in that regard of as a leader being more confident to speak up when he needs to speak. And as a rookie, that's not always the comfortable thing to do, right? When you're the youngest guy in the room. It's hard to step up and talk to men who are older than you. But as I told CJ, like, and everyone here, we res they respect you, right? They look up to him because they see – first and foremost, the type of player that he is. They see the plays that he's able to make. And when they see what he can do, guys want to play for him. Guys want to play for him. Fans want to root for him. 
Media members want to cover him. And C.J. Stroud is something special. And the leadership grows. The legend continues to grow. We may look back in the long run of C.J. Stroud and not even think too much about this Dalton Schultz play. Heck, there's so many more plays to be made over the course of the season for C.J. Stroud. That Dalton Schultz play, uh, it's a big one now. And the fun conversation about C.J. Stroud uh, helping design the exact way that, that play went down, that's great. It might just be a footnote with some of the big plays that C.J. Stroud has to make still this season. The never rest, always working, always wants a little bit more. I love that mentality from C.J. Stroud. One more from the quarterback of the Houston Texans. Like I've told y'all before, like by Monday or Tuesday, I'm usually over the game and on to the next one. And um, in this league, that's what you have to do because the next opponent is just as good or even better. So, um for us, like we were like, dang, man, we did some special things. We need some things that we need to clean up. We shouldn't have been in that situation anyways. We should have scored more points. Um, and uh, it is what it is, though. Like now we got to move on and play the Saints and take the good things that we did and, and make those better and take the bad things that we did and fix those things and, and uh, play solid, sound Texan football. So uh, there was some good things that we talked about in that moment, but definitely want to get the win in that. And I feel like the reason we didn't win was because we didn't score offense enough. And, we need touchdowns in this league, not field goals. So, Touchdowns, not field goals. And I know this sounds like a pretty simple and even sometimes coach speaky type thing from C.J. Stroud, but here's why it's important. Yes, you want to take the good and repeat it. You want to take the bad and clean it up. That's something that is very basic and an expectation for not just the quarterback of the Houston Texans, every NFL player, everyone in your job. You have a good week. You want to take the good stuff. And move it into next week. You have a bad week at work. You want to eliminate the bad stuff. Make sure it doesn't happen again the next week at work. But that has not always been the standard in the building for the Houston Texans. You think back to some of the things that Bill O'Brien would be proud about. They, they would narrowly escape with a victory, and he would guffaw and scuff, scoff that uh, people were questioning that they didn't win enough. When the Texans made the AFC South or when they won the AFC South championship made the playoffs because they won the AFC South championship, Bill O'Brien doesn't matter. Back-to-back -back AFC South champions doesn't matter. Brian back-to-back -back AFC South champions. Like that was a small achievement hitting Dalton Schultz on a potential game winning route that you helped come up with, with the offensive coordinator. Cause you and the OC figured out exactly what Jesse Bates is going to do on third down. Like, that's a small thing, and C.J. Stroud kept it a small thing. Like, yes, he explained why it happened, and it's important, and that's a peek inside how good C.J. Stroud can be, but he kept it a small thing and realized the big thing was they didn't win. Field goals don't win. we got to score more points. we got to score more touchdowns. Like, yes, yeah, C.J. Stroud's right. The standard at NRG Stadium is higher. C.J. Stroud is a part of it. And even basic formulaic stuff like accountability – after a game doesn't go their way is something that is ever present around this team. And it's an exciting era for Texans football. I've deemed it the era of good vibes. The era of good vibes hopefully gets restarted or at least back on track with the Saints coming to town on Sunday. Not an easy one. C.J. Stroud talked about it. Tough opponent for C.J. Stroud and the offense. Tough opponent for the defense as well. The Saints well-coached. Really solid defense, decent enough on offense, won't be an easy one, but the era of good vibes tries to get back on track on Sunday at NRG Stadium against the New Orleans Saints. And if it's going to get there, C.J. Stroud's going to be the conductor of that train. What'd you think? Make too much of C.J. Stroud's comments? Love what C.J. Stroud's comments have to say? Head to the comment section down below. Always interacting in the comment section. On your way to the comment section, Hit the thumbs up on this video, subscribe to the channel, put the notifications on so you know when a new video or a live stream is starting here on this channel. And of course, check out Houston Football, where I do all my writing on the Houston Texans. The link's in the description down below. Thank you, everybody, for your support. Thank you for watching. I can't wait till we talk Texans again soon.